In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sixth Day Navina to God our Father Theme for today, God the Ever Merciful Father As for you souls in a state of sin, or who are ignorant of religious truth, I will not be able to enter you. However, I will be close to you because I never stop calling you, inviting you to desire to receive the benefits I bring you so that you may see the light and be healed of sin. I spend days, sometimes years, close to some soul to be able to ensure their eternal happiness. They do not know that I am there waiting for them, calling them every moment of the day. However, I never become weary and I still feel joy in remaining close to you, always hoping that you will return to your father someday and that you will at least offer me some act of love before you die. This is taken from the book, The Father Speaks to His Children, the message given by the father to Mother Eugenia. Let us recite the prayer, God is my Father. My Father in heaven, how sweet it is to know that you are my Father and that I am your child. Especially when the skies of my soul are cloudy and my cross weighs more heavily. I feel the need to repeat to you, Father, I believe in your love for me. Yes, I believe that you are a father to me at every moment of my life and that I am your child. I believe that you love me with an infinite love. I believe that you are watching over me night and day and that not a hair falls from my head without your permission. I believe that in your infinite wisdom you know better than I what is good for me. I believe that in your infinite power you can bring good even out of evil. I believe that in your infinite goodness you make everything to the advantage of those who love you. Even under the hands of those who strike me, I kiss your hand which heals. I believe but increase in me faith, hope and love. Teach me always to see your love as my guide in every event of my life. Teach me to surrender myself to you like a baby in its mother's arms. Father, you know everything. You see everything. You know me better than I know myself. You can do everything and you love me. My Father, since it is your wish that we should always turn to you, I come with confidence to ask you, together with Jesus and Mary, please mention your intention. For this intention and uniting myself to their most sacred hearts, I offer you all my prayers, my sacrifices and mortifications, all my actions and greater faithfulness to my duties. Give me the light, the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. Strengthen me in this spirit that I may never lose him never sadden him and never allow him to become weaker in me. My Father, I ask this in the name of Jesus your Son and you Jesus, open your heart 
and place in it my own and together with Mary's offer it to our Divine Father. Obtain for me the grace that I need. Divine Father, call all men to yourself. Let all the world proclaim your fatherly goodness and your divine mercy. Be a tender father to me and protect me wherever I am like the apple of your eye. Make me always a worthy son, daughter. Have mercy on me. Divine Father, sweet hope of our souls, may you be known, honored and loved by all men. Divine Father, infinite goodness poured out on all peoples, may you be known, honored and loved by all men. Divine Father, beneficent due of humanity, may you be known, honored and loved by all men. We take the scripture reading for the sixth day from Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32. Jesus went on to say, There was once a man who had two sons. The younger one said to him, Father, give me my share of the property now. So the man divided his property between his two sons. After a few days, the younger son sold his part of the property and left home with the money. He went to a country far away where he wasted his money in reckless living. He spent everything he had. Then a severe famine spread over that country and he was left without a thing. So he went to work for one of the citizens of that country who sent him out to work on his farm and to take care of the pigs. He wished he could fill himself with the bean pods the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything to eat. At last he came to his senses and said, All my fire hired workers have more than they can eat, and here I am about to starve. I will get up and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. So he got up and started back to his father. He was still a long way from home when his father saw him. His heart was filled with pity and he ran, threw his arms around his son and kissed him. Father, the son said, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father called his servants. Hurry, he said. Bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. Then go and get the prize calf and kill it. And let us celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. And so the feasting began. In the meantime, the elder son was out in the field. On his way back, when he came close to the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, What's going on? Your brother has come back home, the servant answered. And your father has killed the price calf, because he got him back safe and sound. The elder brother was so angry that he would not go into the house. So his father came out and begged him to come in. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have worked for you like a slave, and I have never disobeyed your orders. What you have given me? Not even a goat for me to have a feast with my friends. But this son of yours, 
wasted all your property on prostitutes and when he comes back home you kill the prize calf for him my son the father answered you are always here with me and everything i have is yours but we had to celebrate and be happy because your brother was dead but now he is alive he was lost but now he has been found day 6 god the ever merciful father so last month a stray dog that a friend of mine tends to disappeared from his territory this fellow has a habit of wandering even though he has only three legs having lost one to an amputation post an accident when he was few months old as you can imagine my friend was frantic she made inquiries posted on social media and requested people to pray for his safe return and keep a look out for him as he was reported to have gone to an area nearly 12 kilometers away the search was mainly concentrated there Imagine my friend's relief when someone from even further to where the dog was supposed to have gone called her and told her she had found the dog and kept him in her custody. My friend immediately got out her car and went across to pick him up and bring him back to his territory. A lot of us appreciated my friend's efforts especially as this naughty dog is a serial wanderer. My friend could have just thrown her hands up in frustration and forgotten about him but she chose to do whatever possible to get him back to safety. And as I mulled over this incident it took me to the chapter on the prodigal son in the Bible. Now there are exactly 7 verses from the time the boy leaves his house to the time he returns. Since the boy returns within a span of 7 verses we sometimes miss out on the fact that the father had to wait for how long days months years there is no mention of any time frame but for those who wait even a single moment can seem like a long long time now let's read verse 20 and rising up he came to his father and when he was yet a great way off his father saw him and was moved with compassion and running to him fell upon his neck and kissed him so let's take the first part of that verse and when he was yet a great way off his father saw him we see the good father never gave up hope he never stopped waiting he never stopped looking out the last part of verse 20 running to him fell upon his neck and kissed him the father went out to greet the boy he did not stand at his doorstep with arms folded across his chest and a stern forbidding look on his face he was one may say extravagant in the way he greeted the prodigal son who had undoubtedly broken his heart and this my dear friends is the father we are privileged to call our abba one who loves us so much one whose heart breaks when we choose the wrong road he lets us go but he waits for some he waits days for some he waits months and for some he waits years and i'm sure there are some who sadly never return who persist in error and refuse to come back to the father as we continue with the prayers for today let us lift up all those whom abba is still waiting for and pray for them to return to his loving arms Pray for the sixth day of the Navina. Let us never fail to praise the infinity of God's mercy. From His merciful heart flows torrents of love to flood the souls of us poor sinners. 
O merciful Father, O majestic and omnipotent One, look at us wretched sinners with Thy merciful eyes. We come to Thee, our loving Father, trusting in Thy abundant mercy. O kind eternal Father, we have offended Thee ever so often, but now we come repentant, humbly kneeling before Thee. Forgive us, we beg Thee, O Father in heaven. Be gracious to us, we plead. Our sins are as numerous as the stars in the sky. Our souls are stained and scarred by our transgressions. Still, we look to Thee, dear Father, and implore Thy mercy. Eternal Father, pardon us and be merciful to us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We will now recite the thanksgiving prayer to our Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for having given us this opportunity to spend time in prayer and thanksgiving to you, our merciful God. We thank you for give, having given us the gift of life. We thank you for our families, our friends, and all who constantly reflect your love and mercy to us. We thank you for the infinite love you have shown to each one of us. Your love, dear Father, is our hope. It is due to this immense love that we were saved from the tyranny of the evil one. We thank you for your unfathomable mercy, which has touched and melted the hearts of so many of us and changed us from souls hardened and embittered by the storms of life to souls burning with love for you. We thank you for the great care and concern you have for each one of us. You, our loving Father, protect us so tenderly and keep us safe in the palm of your hand. We thank you, good Father, for answering all our prayers and providing for all our needs. May we never fail to praise you, our Father, and give you thanks. May we always remember that your love will follow us wherever we go and be our consolation in moments of grief. Loving Father, our Lord and Creator, we praise you, we adore you, we love you and we thank you. Merciful Jesus, only begotten Son of the Father, we praise you, we adore you, we love you and we thank you. Holy Spirit, our sanctifier and guide, we praise you, we adore you, we love you and we thank you. Our Lady, Mother of Jesus and our Mother, pray for us. All angels and saints, pray for us.